in my presentation, I will uh, uh, talk about breeding uh, uh, for an animal that converts feed in an efficient way uh, to milk. And the advantages of this is that uh, the farmer not will only reduce his feed cost, but also the cows will have a lower car carbon footprint per kilogram of milk. But before I start with uh, my presentation, I will have a small poll for our viewers. Here on the slide, you see four cows, four different cows, four heifers with a quite different feed efficiency. Um, uh, I, show you, I will show you these four cows because when I'm talking about feed efficiency, then I hear many comments from farmers that say, okay, when I'm breeding for an efficient cow, I will a cow, I will get a cow that I don't like in my barn because they think the cow will be too frail, don't have enough capacity, not enough depth, uh, will get more milk fever or, or what else. But I will first give you a, a short description from those four cows and then you have to make your choice which cow do you think is the most efficient cow and when you look to cow one that's a stylish cow producing 38 kilograms fat and protein corrected milk and when i'm talking about kilograms of milk i always in my presentation talking about fat and protein corrected milk that's the way that we, how we explain that and that cow is, uh, weights uh, 660 kilograms, is uh, 1 meter 50 high. Looking to cow 2, she's a little bit smaller, producing 33 kilograms of, of milk, more muscular, um, and is 1 meter 45 height. Cow 3, a more smooth cow, producing almost uh, 39 kilograms fat of protein corrected milk. Uh, also 1 meter 50 high and weighs 665 kilograms. Looking to cow 4, also a very stylish cow, I think, with a very good depth, producing 36 kilograms of milk, 1 meter 55, uh, 52 height and 665 kilograms of weight. Okay, then I will ask you now to make your choice for you or yourself. Which cow do you think is the most efficient. Okay, then I will give you uh, the answer and I will switch to the most efficient. And as you can see here, cow one, that's the most efficient. Uh, she is uh, eating 22.1 kilogram of dry matter. Uh, that's the same as cow two, but she all, almost make five kilograms of milk more than cow two. A cow 2, she is having a feed efficiency of 1.51, and uh, a cow 3, 1.66, and the cow with the lowest efficiency is cow 4. As she's having a nice production uh, for a heifer, so 36 kilograms of milk, but she's eating almost 25 kilograms of dry matter to produce these 36 kilograms of milk. And the message of this small story uh, is that you can't see it on the outside of the cow which cow is the most efficient. You have to measure it, and you, the feed intake, and then you will know. And measuring is knowing. Okay, then I will go further with my presentation. Uh, uh, the importance of feed efficiency. Why is it important? Uh, Joost told it already, and Mike also, that uh, the feeding cost is almost 60% of the, the cost of milk production. And by breeding for feed efficiency, we can save, and I will show you that later on, an average from 10% of the feeding costs. And another positive impact uh, is breeding of feed efficiency that you will lower the greenhouse gas emissions from your cows per kilograms of milk. Here you see uh, in this graph the correlation between feed efficiency and methane production, a methane production, 
in this graph you see it on the left side, methane production per 100 kilograms of uh, fat and protein corrected milk, and at the bottom you see feed efficiency. And as you can see, when the feed efficiency is increasing, the methane uh, emissions are going down. So that's, that's quite important to know. Another correlation what we see, not such a high correlation, but we still see that when you look to the life weight of a cow, uh, and you look to our cows over the past 30 years, and you see that you, our cows have grown about four centimeters and are 50 kilograms heavier than at that time. And when we look to the trends in, in breeding, then you st still see that our cows will grow bigger and will get more weight when we grow on the same way as we have done it in the last 30 years. Uh, our Dutch cows are on average. Uh, almost 660 kilograms and about one meter 50 tall. And what we see uh, uh, on our farms that heavier cows need about one or one and a half kilogram dry matter of feed per day extra per 100 kilogram of body weight. So uh, a cow with more body weight needs more feed just to keep her body in shape. And that's good to know. Then I will give you here an example of four cows. And we have measured this uh, on one of our farms. There are four cows. Have, they made three lactations and they all produced around 30,000 kilograms fat and protein corrected milk. <coughs> and as you look to cow A, and then you see that C, uh, was eating almost 27,000 kilograms of dry batter. And that means that she has a feed efficiency for 1.13. Looking to cow D, eh, producing almost the same amount of kilograms of milk, then you see that she was eating uh, 18,500 kilograms of dry matter. So she was eating uh, 8,000 kilograms dry matter less than cow uh, A and uh, making the same milk production. And then you see she's having a feed efficiency for 1.65. Uh, and when you look to the profit per cow per euro, and the farmer thinks, okay, I have three cow or four cows with 30,000 kilograms of milk. They probably will eat the same, but when you are measuring, you will see that it's quite different. Then that will mean that the farmer will earn about 1,700 euro per cow, uh, for more from cow D than from cow A. And that's, you can say, almost 34% more profit compared to cow A. Um, where do we all get that information from? Uh, we started in, uh, in 2017 uh, by uh, recording data on uh, commercial, commercial dairy farms. Uh, we started at Alders Overloon, and later on uh, we, uh, we found four more farmers uh, where we can measure. In total, they have a little bit more than 2,000 cows, and all this data we collect and we gather that uh, for our research. On the other side, we will get uh, from five research farms in Holland and Flanders. We also get data from feed intake, and that will mean that on year base, we get information from uh, two and a half thousand uh, uh, dairy cows. And at this moment, we have already uh, 8,700 cows with feed intake data. What are we are uh, measuring on those farms? Of course, uh, feed intake, uh, raw fish concentrate, milk production um, daily, uh, body weight two or three times daily, depending on how much they, uh, how often they are milking. We are measuring water intake, health rates, claw health by Digiclaw, 
fertility uh, by overlord and measuring also we will start measuring uh, methane emissions on, on some farms with the green feed and with sniffers. So we, as you see, we will get a lot of data daily from those farms. What did we find? Uh, first, we saw that there was a very big variation between cows. It was already told before. And those five farms are well-managed farms, and then you still see very big uh, variation between the cows. Uh, on some farms, and you must think about that those farmers are producing between 11,000 and 12,000 kilograms of milk, uh, because they are well-managed farms, and then you still see cows on those farms that have a feed efficiency from 1.1. So that will mean that from every kilogram of dry matter, she's making 1.1 kilogram of milk. But on the other hand, you see cows eh, on that same farm that make twice as much milk than that low cow, eh, making 2.2 kilograms of uh, milk from one kilogram of dry matter. And then eh, good to know that national average is around 1.46 for feed efficiency for the Dutch farms. What do we see more, and then especially on those five commercial farms? And then I have divided uh, the 25% best cows uh, and the 25% uh, lower cows for feed efficiency. First, looking to the 25% best for feed efficiency. On average, they have a feed efficiency of 1.88. And as you can see, they produce uh, 40.2 kilograms uh, of milk from 22.6 uh, kilograms of dry matter. Are you looking to the cows with the lowest feed efficiency? Uh, they have uh, a feed efficiency of 1.38. Then you see they produce 10 kilograms of milk less than the, the best cows, and they are eating almost the same, a little bit more. This is the thing that we thought, uh, that's for instance what I told before, that I was always thinking that cows that produce a lot of milk have to eat a lot. But as you can see, the, the most efficient cows do produce much more milk with the same amount of dry matter intake. And also when you look to the concentrates per kilogram of milk, and then you see that the, the cows with the best feed efficiency, they need, they need around 220 grams of concentrates per kilogram of milk, and the cows with the lower feed efficiency, they need 10 or 20 percent more concentrate per kilogram of uh, uh, milk. I have to say it in words again, what we saw on the slide, had the 25% best cows for feed efficiency in the herd need a quarter less feed for the same amount of fat and protein corrected milk as the 25% lowest cows for feed efficiency. So that doesn't mean uh, only lower feeding cost, but also less methane emission and less manure. What do we do with all those information, what we gather on those farms? Uh, we have uh, used that to make a uh, breeding value for feed efficiency. And uh, looking to this slide, you see that a breeding value from 104 for feed efficiency will mean that the offspring from that bull will produce about 200 kilograms of milk extra with the same feed intake. And then when your average milk production on your farm, when that is about 10,000 kilograms of milk, and when you're using a bull with 104 for breeding value, that will mean that the offspring will make 10,200 kilograms of milk with the same amount of feed. And when you are counting with 30 cents of uh, the milk price, that will mean that you will earn about 60 euro per, per cow per lactation extra. 
And on the other hand, uh, we also see that those cows will uh, have a lower carbon footprint per kilogram of milk, and that's about 2% less methane emissions per kilogram of milk. And when you really want to select on, uh, on feed efficiency, and then I, I made here a list from uh, some booths from CRV. And on average, feed efficiency from our booths is around 104, but you also see that there are already many booths with 106 or higher. And the highest ones are 109, 109, 108, and you also see that and they are not only good for efficiency, but also for production, for longevity, for, for health, for fertility, for other health, and, uh, and, and hoof health. <clears throat> um, what we also uh, can show you, and we are quite proud of that, that is that we, uh, on those farms where we are measuring feed intake, those farms are also using CRV bulls, and then you can see uh, then, that we, for instance, from a bull, uh, a young, young proven bull like Esperanto, we have already 66 daughters with feed intake. The 66 daughters of Esperanto were behind those feed bins. And that will mean that we have already a very good reliability for our breeding values for feed efficiency. And, and uh, even you see Jupiler, also a quite young bull, he has already uh, uh, 132,000 of uh, 132 daughters, um, and that will give him a reliability of 80% for the breeding value feed efficiency. Uh, now that we have uh, these reliable breeding values, and I have to say, and for a young bull, the breeding value of the reliability from the young genomics bulls is already around 50%. Uh, but when you think that I'm now going to say now you have, you have to select just for feed efficiency, then I will say no, you shouldn't do that. A farmer can make most profit not only when your cows are producing a lot of milk eh, in an efficient way, so they have to, they have, should have a good feed efficiency. But say they also have to stay long at the farm, make many lactations, and stay healthy eh, for a long time. And that's the best way to achieve um, a high income. And therefore, you could you would best use the the index CRV efficiency. Okay, thank you all very well for viewing and listening to my presentation.